Well, good morning, sunshine. Welcome to another day of the Make Your Damn Bed podcast. Today is episode one of my cult series. So if you don't want to hear me talk real talk and about heavier concepts, it's totally understandable. I do plan to err on the side of this being a morning motivation podcast still. That said, I do want to be able to integrate a more actively vulnerable and authentic and genuine real talk methodology. And sometimes that means I'm gonna wanna just talk shit. And other times that means I will wanna share opinions on things that may be hot takes. Today is one of those. And when we're talking about cults, the thing that I find most fascinating is that they do prey on our natural human psychology and our predispositions towards wanting a sense of community, a sense of feeling heard, a sense of belonging, a sense of feeling understood, as well as a sense of control and a sense of this is what we should do next. And generally speaking, I think most of us would agree that we would never be victimized by a cult. We would see right through that shit. But that's the thing about cult is that anyone with a human brain is susceptible to being manipulated by someone in a cult. And that to me is the big reason why I've always been fascinated with cults, just because I have a human brain and I love human psychology and the fact that other people have marketed their own insidious nightmare fuel onto other people's brains using that psychology is very fascinating to me and always will be. So today for this first episode, I decided I would start strong and lead into the cult like most cult leaders do by finding my why. Why do I care about cults and why do I think it's important to share with you? And like I said, the fact that we all have a human brain and we all could be preyed upon by that psychology is fascinating. But more so, I do think that we have all fallen victim to cult-like manipulation through the media, through the content we consume, through capitalism, through our consumerism, through marketing. And obviously there are levels and nuances, and this is all my opinion. And I am obviously speaking from a very privileged take. So please, as you're listening to this, do so with your discretion and use your better judgment and feel free to call me out if I have said something incorrectly or overgeneralized. That said, typically when I am generalizing, that's all I'm doing, I'm generalizing. I am obviously not accounting for all of the nuance and the specifics that can and do go into the way that we live our lives. That said, the real reason why I wanted to start doing this series specifically is because when I tell people that I have a podcast called Make Your Damn Bed, often their first response is to compare me to an author and motivational speaker, I guess, named Rachel Hollis, who had the book, Girl, Wash Your Face. And upon reading that book, I got so frustrated with being compared to somebody so out of touch and aggressive that I immediately got defensive and went down a rabbit hole of how to avoid creating a culture in my particular community that would align or even compare me to someone like Rachel Hollis. And this is not to say that she is not an incredible speaker and that she doesn't have wonderful points. But I think the more I dig into motivational content in particular with personal development and self-help stuff, I realize how many of those people started in marketing and started in sales and really could care less about the psychology behind it, could care less about helping the vulnerable people that often seek them out and actually just want to create an insidious Ponzi scheme where you are addicted to the dopamine that you receive from these gurus, quote unquote, and continue to go back and then continue to blame yourself for when the things don't work long-term. I'm going to drop names throughout this and these are my opinions and like I said they are not all inclusive most of the people that I'm dropping names from I have gotten solid quotes solid advice and solid motivation from as well there is nuance in it that said overall my standing of a lot of the people I will be referencing in these cult series in my opinion do often abuse their power and get trapped in that slippery slope of capitalism to where they are preying upon vulnerable individuals in a way that is not actually helping and in fact is perpetuating more negative and toxic cycles which is my nightmare To me, the biggest reason why I show up to this podcast every day is not to catch that bag, 
It's not to get that check. It's not to get any notoriety. It is simply to spread information to help you get out of bed or go to work or do whatever you happen to do while you're binging or listening so that ideally for someone somewhere, I can make their life a little bit easier because life is heavy enough. And to know that there are people in every industry, in every field that are in it for the wrong reasons and will prey upon you if you're not careful, I think is an incredibly valuable lesson to learn, even though it is a difficult one, especially when you get into people hiding behind things like Christianity, things like God, things like self-help and self-care because of the simple fact that it just sounds more evil. You're hiding behind things that are supposed to be morally good and you are using them to perpetuate morally unjust and bad things. That's messed up. Anyway, and realizing that we are all quote unquote influencers in a way, every time that we post something on social media or we share a brand with a friend or we communicate a passion for something, we are influencing the energy around us. So by that account, we are all micro influencers. So to me, that means that we are all innately responsible for the influence that we have. And ideally we can perpetuate a more positive and proactive and productive influence. And by productive, I don't mean constantly producing for capitalism. I simply mean productive to your sense of peace, your sense of rest, your sense of community, your sense of belonging, all of those internal things that actually do afford happiness rather than the short term, right? And I think that the most dangerous slippery slope with self-help is that there is no prescriptive one size fits all generic piece of advice that anyone can give to anyone that can be applied. And we all want a solution. We all want a quick fix. We all want to never feel pain again and only feel joy again, but that is quite simply impossible. It is unreasonable to think that you will never feel pain if you still want to feel things like joy. So to me, it's more about learning to balance and not stay in those painful things. And it's more about learning your specific recipe, your concoction, so that you can create a life that you don't feel like you're phoning in, so that you can feel is sustainable, so that you can feel like you do have opportunities and time to chase joy. And obviously that is a privilege to have time luxury and the ability to even focus on things like joy. And I think that that is an often overlooked part because it's not sellable. The self-help industry is a billion dollar industry and it preys upon vulnerable people. And while I am a part of that industry, I refuse to package bullshit and sell it to you as a one size fits all solution with false promises under the guise that it'll be your fault if it fails. Because in reality, while mindset and micro changes and making tiny adjustments and optimizing and life hacking can absolutely improve your life, there are factors that 100% outweigh any tiny factors you may have done, such as systemic issues, your history, your life experience, your current experience, your current financial experience, and your current emotional state. And that is not even a conclusive list. There are so many factors that can greatly outweigh just mindset and optimization. But unfortunately in the self-help industry, that isn't packageable in a seminar where I can scream at you and tell you it's your fault that you didn't wake up at 5 a.m. and eat your greens and change your mindset. When in reality, you might've done all of those things and still felt like shit. So in true Julie America fashion, I will probably dilute a lot of this information about cults and multi-level marketing and scams and vulnerability and trauma and boil it down into tiny little compact life lessons so that it can be sellable and clickbaity so that you will want to be here and you can have actionable things to do. And I have no problem doing that because the difference is I know I am not trying to sell you a solution because to me, those people who are preying and capitalizing on other people's misery will constantly put out and produce content. That is unavoidable, right? These people are going to continue to produce toxic content that preys upon the vulnerable. 
So considering the fact that we are all micro influencers and we all do have an impact on the world around us, it is very important that we take our own accountability with the fact that we are role models. And because I have a platform where I get to speak to human beings who are just as wonderful and amazing and powerful as you, it gives me all the inspiration that I need to show up in a deeper and heavier capacity, but to make sure that I never tiptoe over that line towards trying to catch that bag over trying to do good in the world. But luckily for me, I've been broke before and I'd happily be broke again as long as I can continue to sleep at night and not feel guilty about the way I made my money. I do not think Jeff Bezos sleeps peacefully on that yacht. And that is just what I like to believe. Okay, that's it. I, that's just a me thing. And it helps me sleep at night knowing that he is not. So that is my why. I want to create a more powerful and inspirational platform for good without ignoring the reality that there are lots of people like me doing work similar to my work, but are doing so with the wrong intentions. And in an effort to ensure that I never ignore that fact or fall into that trap, I want to address and discuss a lot of the patterns and manipulation tactics that do go into the delineation between quote unquote good and bad influencers so that we can identify it and avoid falling into those traps. And to me, there is a potential to separate the art from the artist because in my final name drop of the day, I have friends who post Jordan Peterson quotes that don't realize what a problematic, terrible person Jordan Peterson is. And while I will gently let them know to maybe research the beliefs of their source to ensure that they're aligning with a lot of those thoughts, I won't disagree that a lot of those quotes are incredibly powerful and moving and motivational. And I think the big deal is we often say that these people are evil and bad and it seems clear cut and nothing in this life is. So I want to highlight a little bit of that nuance so that we can be a little more comfortable acknowledging it when it does arise in our reality so we can identify it in real time and not fall victim to it. Anyway, I think that does it for the introductory Finding My Why episode. I love you so stinking much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you tomorrow while you make your damn bed.